Hello, this is John Peltier of Peltier Technical Services, and I'm going to give a brief presentation called Rapid Fire Charting Tips and Tricks. Uh, Peltier Tech does Excel based uh, projects for clients. Uh, Peltier Tech makes Excel VBA add ins that help you with your charting needs, and Peltier Tech also supplies training in Excel and related technologies. This is for uh, John Mikaloudis of MyExcelOnline.com. He asked for uh, my best tip of the year, but I have a handful of them and I'm gonna go through them as quickly as we can, I can. So let's get started. Um, first of all, we're gonna insert a chart. And in order to insert a chart, you select your data or you select one cell in the data. And if you select one cell, Excel figures out what the block of data is that includes that cell and makes a chart with that data. You go to the insert tab and you come over to the charts group here and you figure out what chart type you want to make and it takes a bunch of clicks and so forth. But there's a shortcut that'll save you clicks and that shortcut is Alt and the F1 function key. And when you press that you get a chart in the middle of the window and now I look at this chart and I think, well, that's not exactly what I wanted. I wanted a line chart. Alt F1 makes a, a chart of the default chart type. And I want to change my default chart type to a line chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my chart. And I'm going to come here to change chart type. And you see this, the one that's highlighted is the column chart. And if I right click on it, you see it is set as a default chart with a check mark. And I want a line chart and I'm going to choose a line chart with markers and I'll right click on it and I will select set as default chart. And you see if I right click again, it is set. And so I'll say uh, OK and you see it's converted the chart and then I'm going to delete that. I'm going to just do it again. Alt F1 just to make sure it works with the, the new default chart type. And here's my default chart. And um, so that's two tricks right there alt f1 in the default chart and now another trick is i want to line it up with the the cell grid which which is in the back behind the chart is highlighted so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold the i'm going to move the chart but i'm going to hold the alt key down while i move the chart and that forces the chart the edges of the chart to line up with the cell boundaries so that's an easy way to align a bunch of charts um very easily. If you're making a dashboard with eight charts, it's nice to be able to just use Alt and line up to the cell boundaries instead of having to painstakingly move it pixel by pixel. Um, now we look at the chart and again, there's something the matter with it. Uh, I wanted my years to be plotted on the x-axis and my sales to be plotted on the y-axis, but Excel looked at the data and it didn't see any difference between the years in the first column, the numbers in the first column and the numbers in the second column. Um, so it plotted them all as Y values. Uh, if my first column had had text labels, um, names of, of sales per personnel or so forth, or if it had been formatted as, as a date, Excel would have known, oh, that's the X values, but it doesn't know if it's just numbers. But what you can do is another trick called TLC, and that means top left cell. And if you leave the top left cell blank like this, when you make a chart, uh, I'm going to do Alt F1 again. I make a chart and look at that. My uh, I'll use Alt also the Alt and and uh, drag to move it where I want it. You see now I have my years along the x-axis and my values in the y-axis, and that's exactly what I wanted to do. Um, so that's great. Now. Here I was showing annual data, but what if I have quarterly data? Well, it works the same way. These are actually text. You can tell that they're left aligned in the cell instead of right aligned like the years over here. Um, if I do Alt F1, I get a another line chart and it's the, the same as the other and I hold Alt key down while I drag it and that's good. But you know something? I can make that axis look a little bit nicer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split my my year and quarter labels into two columns of labels. And so here's the labels that I'm starting with. Uh, 2021 space Q1, 2021 space Q2, and so forth. And what I'm gonna do is put formulas here. So my first formula looks at the value over here. And uh, it if, well, in fact, I have it um, reversed here, but uh, if my quarters, uh, I just use whatever text is in that cell following the space. So I use the text af after formula. 
uh, text after a space and it just takes the the whatever text is in that column after the space and puts it here now for the year i only want to show the year for the first uh, quarter so if the quarter ends in one then i will take uh, text before that space otherwise i'll just put a blank and so now i have my year only for the first quarter and then the rest of the quarters under it and then my next year only for the first quarter so now if i create my chart um you get a very nice looking um x-axis uh let me just drag it up here with the alt drag and you see i have quarter one two three four grouped with 2021 and quarter one two three four grouped with quarter 2022 and i call this kind of the tlc plus because you have some they're not really blanks they're they're double quotes but in this case excel treats those as blanks when it's building the chart and so i call it my top left cell plus um as a as a kind of a nickname for that um so now let's just look at regular dates i told you before that um I don't need the top left cell if I have dates, but let me just make this chart with dates, even with or without the top left cell, it's gonna look the same. And now you see, I have my dates uh, first of every month for the last two years, and the chart looks good. The labels, well, they're, they're, it shows the entire date and you have to kind of tip your head uh, to read them. And it doesn't show every one, it shows every other one. And I think we can do a better job of that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a, a variation of the TLC plus that I did a minute ago, and I'm going to put the years in the first column and then the month names in the second column. And so the month name I can get just by formatting uh, that date using a, a shortcut format of MMM, which gives me the three letter shortcut uh, for the the month and then for the the year if the month of that that um date is january i'm going to put the year otherwise i'm just going to put double quotes meaning it's going to look blank and now let's do this again with alt f1 and let's see what our our grouped axis looks like come on excel um oh i, I uh, pressed the wrong button there i'm sorry alt f1 and here here's my chart and we'll alt and drag it if you hold control and drag it it actually makes a copy of the chart and you can see where the the copy is going to go and if you hold the alt key while you hold the control it's going to make a copy and it's going to stick the 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 copied one uh it's going to align that with the um uh, cell boundaries but we're not going to do that we're just going to drop it right here and you see i have just as i did with the quarters i have the year underneath and then the months above that and um well these months are are too long to fit horizontally so excel made them vertically and you can't override that that um orientation no matter what you try it just doesn't work uh, excel doesn't allow you to do that but what we can do is we can shorten the abbreviation you've probably seen uh in places where instead of using the jan feb mar kind of abbreviations it just uses jfm the first uh letter of the name and we can get that here instead of using uh, a number format of mmm we can use a number format of mmmmm in our text formula and that gives us uh just the one letter uh, abbreviation for the month and i'll do my uh, alt f1 and here comes my chart and uh, that looks very nice doesn't it alt f1 and we see we have 2021 january february march april may and there's no no risk really of confusing the uh months that have the same letter because january is the beginning of the year july and june are next to each other in the middle and june comes first so we're not going to confuse those um if they're if they're shown as all the months of the year um and that that's actually a nice compact um grouped axis and uh i'm just going to show you one more thing about this here i have my my year and my month but i can i can further break it down if i want i have my year my quarter and my month and i have the formulas here i'll let you look at those um you can 
you can pause the video and, and write it down and figure out how it works. I'm using the new let function uh, to, to do my quarter, um, to get my quarters out of that. And um, so let's just see how that looks. Here I have Alt F1 and I'll make my chart. And here we go. And we see that the chart actually has three levels of grouping. I have my year, I have my quarter, and I have my one letter month abbreviation. And it, it's very clear, it's, it's nice. Um, what I've discovered is that I don't know if there is a limit on how many levels of grouping you can show in a chart like that. It's probably something ridiculous like uh, 255 or, or one of those powers of two minus one kind of numbers. Um, but what you'll find is uh, uh, I've, I've used it in some charts and it's still effective when you have five or six layers um, as long as you can get away with short labels for the, the innermost grouping um, labels. Um, when you have too many, though, what happens is the, the axis takes up increasingly larger amounts of your chart and there's less room for your data. But if you have three lay levels, it's not too bad. Um, so there's my best several um, uh, tips for um, the past year. I uh, hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, you can uh, always send me an email. Say, hey, I saw I saw your uh, your tips on myexcelonline.com, and I wonder if you could explain something. And I answer all kinds of emails, uh, so um, feel free to contact me and visit my website. I have a blog with hundreds and hundreds of examples. And um, uh, signing off, John Peltier. Thank you.